So this is a Kawai R100 drum machine from 1987. It is their flagship drum machine from that time. It's got loads of really impressive features and I'm going to go through some of them. It has 12-bit samples and they are recorded as well with a very good sample rate, 32 kilohertz. So the, the quality of the sounds is really high. The other nice thing is that all the sounds are stored on a ROM and it's very easy to replace those sounds with other sounds. So actually this has a total of four different ROM sets. So I've got two ROM sets from Kawai and I've got a Drumulator set and an Akai XR10 set. This cost about £650 in the UK and about $800 in the US. It's eight part polyphonic, eight part multi timbral. These pads, believe it or not, are velocity sensitive. I tend to turn the velocity sensitivity off. Some of the features that it has, this thing is an absolute beast, right? Eight individual outputs, it has a stereo output, it has a headphone output. It's got MIDI in, out, through, DIN sync 24, input and output. So you can sync it to your old rolling gear or what have you. A tape clock for syncing. You can dump all the presets via tape as well. It's got a clock out for analog sequences. It's got hi-hat pedal input, a start and stop pedal input. It's got a trigger output and it's got a separate output also for the metronome. The sequencer is generally best to real-time play in stuff live, but it has a step editor so you can go in and touch it up if you want. It's not like a nice Roland step editor, unfortunately, though. You can change the level, the sensitivity of the pads, the tuning of each pad, and the panning of each pad separately. Each of the ROMs, I've got four ROMs, has got 24 different sounds. It's got about half a megabyte of ROM for the sounds. So let's hear it. Uh, we're using the Kawai acoustic kit right now. Let's go through the next set of eight sounds. And bank three now. That's just the first ROM. This has got a ROM expansion. Let's switch it on to the next bank. Those were the acoustic sounds. This is the electric drum bank. Oh, the old orchestra hit there. Next bank. Electric bass there. This thing does have tuning, so you can use it to do bass lines and stuff like that. You could sort of see it like an early groove box. I don't think it quite counts as a groove box because there's not very much live manipulation you can do with it. Like a high Q kind of thing there. Slap bass. That is the second bank. This is the official Kawai bank of electric sounds. The next bank is the Emu Drumulator sound bank. This is my favorite sound bank. The Drumulator has 8-bit sounds, so they definitely sound grittier than the other sounds. But I like the way that they're rendered by the R100. I think it, it keeps that kind of direct drumulator type sound. Let's shake her there. The last of those eight sounds are as follows. I don't know what that sound is, but I really like it. It sounds really rave. And the next kit is maybe a bit of a left field choice, but I've always wanted to have this drum machine. It is the Akai XR10. So here's that, those sounds. Uh, 
That's a nice orchestra hit on the XR10. <laughs> We'll program our own beat now, I think. Let's try and find a blank pattern. So this is where you, you kind of get have to get into the slightly weird way this thing works. It's not that weird, but it is different to other drum machines. I have lost a few patterns in it by doing the wrong thing, but nothing, you know, nothing too serious. I'll start by putting a, a hi-hat in, and I'm going to do it actually with the step record so I can get them at eighth note intervals. So you start by choosing what instrument you're step editing. You choose the time signature. Um, we don't want bar correct. Press the start button and that allows you to start entering notes. Now this is weird because you think, oh, I'll just press the hi-hat button. But no, that's not what you do. You need to use this indication here, which sedates the note interval. So we're gonna go with eighth notes. And then the tempo light flashes the bars and you press stop. And let's um, listen back to what I just put in. Okay, that's good. Let's edit this sound now. So first of all, the level, I would like it to be a bit louder. You get this quite nice graphical display. So editing sounds is it kind of goes okay. At the moment, it's on the default tuning. You can adjust the panning on this thing, so. I have a Boss Reverb unit just off camera. Here's one of the annoyances, right? So now we've changed the sound, but what we recorded in is with the old settings. Now that's a double-edged sword, right? So on the one hand, we can now enter melodic stuff, which is cool. But on the other hand, like we'd like to modify the sound, which has already been recorded. But hey, we're gonna erase that pattern again and I shall re-record it. From this point on, I'm gonna do real-time record. Let's choose a kick drum. I'm gonna route the kick drum using the amazing separate output. The way that you configure the outputs on this is like really, really good, okay. I plugged into jack one on the back. We go to function and then assign. We wanna assign the output and then bass drum two is currently on the stereo jack. So we want that on the individual output. Bang, done. Uh, the issue with this is that it's only one bar long, so I'd like it to be four bars long. It's a bit like the way the SP1200 does extending patterns. You just copy it on top of yourself. Let's copy it again so it's four bars long. When I got this, a lot of the buttons didn't work very well, but it turned out to be surprisingly easy to sort that out, actually. Some of them are still a bit sticky, but all I did was went with the contact cleaner. I'm going to enter some clave and I want it to be somewhat random. So I'm going to use the step record again. So because I'm doing this randomly, I'm just going to hit random buttons on this thing until we've gone around four bars. kind of thinking what to add to this beat now. Let's try it with the different ROMs. People voted basically for the default acoustic ROM and I must say it's a good choice. But let's quickly try the other four ROMs just to see what happens. So the default acoustic.
Okay, here's the electric ROM. Charming, but not quite as nice. This is the drumulator. Very electro. This is the XR10. Oh, yeah, I like that. I like the XR10, but we'll stick with the... Let me show you this syncing to some rolling gear. Let me get the um, 303 and we'll sync that because that will be nice and easy and fun. That works well, and if we had a bit more time, what we could do is we could set one of these instruments to the trigger out. You can choose any of them and have them to the trigger out. Use it to trigger the SH-101 for like a cool bass line. So there we go. That, in a nutshell, is the Kawai R100. It is very 80s industrial. It's easy enough to use could be easier but it is easy to use i would say loads of sync possibilities midi in out din sync in out trigger in out back it all up to tapes got a memory slot easy ram expansion it's dope <laughs>